Good morning everyone. I'm Dr. Alaa Musbah, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Faculty of Medicine, Mansoor University. Today, I wanted to discuss with you vulvitis and porcelain cyst and porcelain abscess. What we wanted to discuss today, the definition of vulvitis, its classification and the clinical presentation, the differential diagnosis of genital ulcers, treatment of vulvitis, porcelain glands, anatomy, and epidemiology and pathology, inflammation and infection, clinical presentation of porcelain cyst and porcelain abscess, and differential diagnosis of vulval swelling whether it is solid or cystic and lastly treatment of porcelain cyst and abscess let us go to our journey vulvitis is inflammation of the external female, female genitalia as you see here inflammation of the external female genitalia in the vulvar region and the perineal region is called vulvitis with redness, inflammation, discharge, skin lesions. So, what is the classification of vulvitis? Actually, it can be classified according to clinical presentation, either acute or chronic, or according to the etiology, either infectious or non infectious. Infectious related to organism which causes the vulvitis. Non-infectious may be related to other factors like allergic vulvitis, or drug eruption, or autoimmune disease. Another classification according to the mode of infection. Either we have sexually transmitted diseases like herpes simplex or cephalus or gonorrhea, or non-sexually transmitted diseases like TB, Wilharzesis. So what is the clinical presentation of the vulvites? As you see in the picture here, the symptoms include redness, swelling of the vulva, painful intercourse and the pain, spontaneous occur at any time, burning sensation sometimes and itching, and sometimes there is discharge as here candidal discharge of fungal infection which is white sick in color scratch mark is sometimes in the vulvar region and the perineal region due to itching and scrubbing what are the signs erythema edema of the vulvar skin possible vaginal discharge as you see here thick creamy white discharge vesicles ulcers cracks Skinning, thickening of the vulvar skin or dystrophy or whitish discoloration or ulcers, all these are signs of vulvitis. The differential diagnosis include infectious and the non infectious as regard the genital ulcers. Infectious like cephalus, like chancroid, like genital herpes simplex virus, which is the commonest cause of genital ulcer, herpes simplex virus, lymphogranuloma venarium, granuloma inguinal, fungal infection, secondary bacterial infection. And this picture of herpes simplex virus, which is the commonest ulcer. What about the non-infectious ulcers in the genital area or the vulvar region, like Pitchy syndrome, fixed drug eruption, as in the picture here, psoriasis, sexual trauma, Wigner's granulomatosis, and malignant ulcers, whether basal cell carcinoma or squamous cell carcinoma or malignant melanoma. What is the treatment? First of all, is continue the use of any potential irritants like soap, like perfume, like certain beds, 
may use this bed which is allergic for her she should stop it and change it with something not allergic so discontinue the use of any potential irritants vaginal infection should be treated discharge from infection is the cause of vulvitis like what like we have candidal infection we can give the patient myconazole vaginal suppository 200 milligram every day for five days or if she has trichomonal vaginitis she can give her metronidazole oral 500 milligram twice daily for seven days or can give her metronidazole vaginal gel every day at the time for five to seven days. So you should manage the source of the infection, which is the vaginitis, if this is a cause of vulvitis. Topical cortisone cream may be used to decrease vulval itching. Treatment of any sexually transmitted disease is important, like gonorrhea, like giving ceftriaxone injection, like cephalus, by giving penicillin injection. So, treatment of any sexually transmitted disease, if it is the cause of vulvitis. Also, if treatment of vulvitis is not effective, further evaluation may include biopsy of the skin to rule out the potential of vulval dystrophy or vulvar dysplasia which is precancerous lesion a biopsy may also be necessary if any skin lesions are present what about the porcelain glands porcelain glands what's called the greater vestibular glands are homologous of the cooper's glands what's called bulbourethral glands in males at puberty, these glands begin to function, providing moisture of the vestibule. And as you see in the picture here, this is a porcelain gland, and this is a porcelain duct. It's a duct to open in the vestibule here. This is a vestibule. Okay? And the secretion released in the vestibule acts as a lubricant when the woman is married during intercourse, this secretions would be help as a lubricant for intercourse as a physiological secretion. The porcelain glands develop from buds in the epithelium of the posterior area of the vestibule. What about the anatomy? The glands are located bilaterally at the base of the labia minora and, and the drain through 2 to 2.5 centimeter long ducts as you see here in the picture this is the parceling gland and this is the 2.5 centimeter ducts that empty into vestibule at about four as you see here and the eight o'clock okay so the ducts open at four and eight o'clock at the vestibule the glands are usually the size of pea and rarely exceed one centimeter as you see here is less than one or more or about one centimeter or less than that they are not palpable except in the presence of diseases or infection or inflammation or cyst and so on okay or abscess what about the epidemiology the porcelain duct cyst the most common cystic growth in the vulva occur in the labia majora as you see here the swelling in the labia majora is a porcelain duct cyst two percent of women develop porcelain duct cyst or gland abscess at some time in life abscess are almost three times more common than cysts white and the black women are more than hispanic women and more frequent between 20 to 29 years of age so this lesion occurred 
more in reproductive age, specifically 20 to 29 years, is more common. What about the pathology of obstruction of the testal parcelling ducts? As you see here in the picture, this is a parcelling gland, this is a parcelling duct. Obstruction is terminal part with resultant dilatation of the duct. Actually, the dilatation occurs in the duct. Okay? And the formation of the cyst. The cyst may become infected and the an abscess may develop later on in the gland. Okay, so destruction of the terminal part of the duct, collection of the secretion inside, causing duct cyst, as you see here in the picture. Later on, infection may occur, complicating this, causing gland abscess. And as you see in the other picture, this is the parcel duct cyst. The parcel and duct cyst doesn't necessarily have to be present before a gland abscess develop. Parcel and gland abscess are polymicrobial, <clears throat> and you should notice that. And the inner ropes are the most common pathogens. However, <clears throat> Neisseria gonorrhea is the predominant aerobic isolates and here in this table you can see some aerobic organisms and anaerobic organisms and as we said an anaerobic organism are the most common pathogens aerobic organisms like Neisseria gonorrhea, Staph aureus, Tryptococcal fecalis, E. coli, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Chlamydia trachomatis while anaerobic organisms like Bacteroid fragilis, Clostridium Bipto-streptococcus species and Eusebacterium species. The clinical presentation of parcel and duct cyst may be asymptomatic. The cyst typically present as a medially protruding mass in the posterior introitus, as you see here, making the introitus looks like S-shaped. Please look to this picture, you will find S-shaped introitus due to swelling in the left parcelin cyst okay so the cyst typically present as a medial protruding mass in the posterior enteritis in the region where the duct opens into the vestibule as you see here if the cyst becomes infected, an abscess may form in the gland. In duration, is usually present around the gland and the wall in sitting or sexual intercourse may result in vulvar pain. Actually, pain, especially if there is a parcel of abscess, is an agonizing pain. The patient cannot sit without pain. Also, during intercourse, there is severe pain, so it is something agonizing. What is the differential diagnosis of cystic and solid vulvar lesions? Cystic lesions like Barcelon duct cyst, dermal inclusion cyst, mucous cyst of the steel, hydradenoma, rubelliferum, cyst of the canal of knock, skin duct cyst. While the solid lesion include fibroma, lipoma, leomyoma, acrocardon, neurofibroma, angiokeratoma, and the squamous cell carcinoma. What about the treatment? If the patient is asymptomatic, no treatment, usually just follow up. However, if the patient is asymptomatic, as in parcel and duct cyst and the gland abscess will require drainage of the cyst and the abscess. I have different lines of treatment for such cases like incision and the drainage, but the problem with this line of treatment is that recurrence of the cyst or abscess may happen and occur more commonly than other lines of treatment, so it is not a good choice at all. 
the definitive drainage involved wood catheter placement or parcel access and the gland abscess. As you see in the picture, this is the wood caster inserted after incision of the cyst wall and put this wood caster to help to keep the track open for drainage of the cyst of abscess. And this is maybe a good choice. Also, another line of treatment like marsupialization for duct cyst. Lastly, the last line is excision of the porcelain gland, as we'll see. I did summarization for the different lines of treatment in this slide, as you see here. Here, in the porcelain cyst, we do incision two to three centimeter, okay? Vertical incision and do drainage for the cyst or abscess. And as I said before, the recurrence more with this line of treatment. The other line is ward caster placement. We will do incision and drainage of the cyst. Then we will insert this caster. It's called ward caster. And this ward caster has a balloon at its end. We inflate this at the balloon with saline and to keep it in place for some weeks to make track which will help the drainage of the cyst and abscess. The third line of treatment as you see here in the picture is marsupialization. We do incision and drainage of the cyst or abscess. It's not preferred during the abscess by the way. It's preferred only if there is no infection. So, if there is a parcel in duct cyst, we can do drainage, incision and drainage, then mercivalization by suturing the edge of the cyst wall with the vestibular mucosa all around, so we'll keep also track open to help drainage. Lastly, the last line of treatment is by excision of the parcel in cyst after incision and dissection and the removal of the porcelain cyst or abscess. Okay? okay. Let us explain more the word caster as you see here in the picture. After the incision is made, the word caster is inserted and the balloon tip is inflated with two to three milli of saline solution injected through the hub of the caster inject here the saliva okay to keep the word caster in place to allow epicellization of the surgically created tract the word caster is left in place for four to six weeks then since the bus taken as here in the picture Two to three times daily may aid patient comfort and healing during the immediate post-operative period. Titus may be resumed after caster insertion, of course, and the cleaning of the wound with antiseptic solution. If cellulitis is present, cultures may be obtained and empiric broad spectrum antibiotic therapy is started before culture results are available. This picture also, this is the word caster insertion. And can you see it here? After the balloon is inflated here, we insert the other end inside the vagina like that. What is the, the other line of treatment, which is marsupialization of the parcel cyst? This procedure shouldn't be used when an abscess is present. After trial preparation and the administration of local anesthesia, the cyst wall is grasped with two small beam steps. Vertical incision is made, as you see here. And the vestibular over the center of the cyst, over the center of the cyst, and the outside the hymenal ring. 
the incision should be about from 1.5 to 3 centimeter according to the size size of the cyst okay then after the cyst is vertically excised the cavity drains spontaneously as you see here in the picture the content of the cavity drain out the cavity also may be irrigated with saline solution you can wash this cavity with saline solution and the if necessary loculations can be broken up with hemostat so don't keep any secretions inside because there may be a pocket or locules inside mist so broke it and drain all the content the cyst wall is then inverted and approximated as you see here to the edge of the vestibular mucosa was interrupted to zero vacuole absorbable suture okay this is how it looks after we did marsupialization future all around and we keep this track open for the rain daily sets of us should begin on the first post-operative day will help the patient to relieve pain and to help also drench. Approximately 5 to 15 percent of Barcelon duct cyst require after marsupialization. What are the complications after this procedure? Maybe dyspareunia, hematoma, or infection. Lastly, the excision of the parcel and gland should be considered in a patient who don't respond to conservative attempts to create a drainage tract, but the procedure should be performed when there is no active infection. Be careful about this point. When multiple attempts have been made to drain a cyst or an abscess, adhesions may be present making the excision difficult and resulting in post-operative scarring and the chronic pain in this area. As you see in the picture here, here we dissect the cyst. After we did the incision, we dissect the cyst from the overcovering the uh, vestibular mucosa and then excite the cyst. This is the end of my lecture. Thank you. I'm Dr. Alam Sbach, Professor of Aesthetics and Gynecology, Faculty of Medicine, Kansu University.